Thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Morali Nikanti. Morali is a principal IBM Cloud Technical Specialist. Okay. Let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Morali Nikanti, principal Cloud Platform Technical Specialist, IBM Technology, and covering BP territories in US national market, Southeast region. And thank you for being so interested and taking your time out of your day uh, during the lunch time uh, to join our Tech Tuesday demo days. This session mainly covers how to take advantage of tamper-proof, enterprise-ready cloud database environment for develop for document-based NoSQL workloads. And I will demo this in the next few minutes and how easily one can provision and manage the hyperprotect database for MongoDB in IBM Cloud. So before going into hyperprotect DBAS for MongoDB, I would like to introduce first the IBM Cloud platform for, for, DBA, for DBAS. What is DBAS? DBAS is a service offered in IBM Cloud which is called Database as a Service, IBM offers in IBM Cloud that enables users to access and use a database system in the cloud, which is managed, fully managed database without buying, buying your own hardware, without installing DB software, without managing a database system administration by your own, and also, right achieving 24 by 7 high availability and without worrying about everything from a periodic upgrades to backups to ensure the database system remains available and secure 24 by 7. all these will be taken care by ibm cloud let's talk about how dbas in ibm cloud what are how many databases are in in ibm cloud there are total 42 databases available in IBM Cloud. And uh, this portfolio includes RDBMS, NoSQL, in-memory, and the enterprise class data warehouse too. To name a few enterprise level databases you are familiar with, IBM GB2, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Redis, and ETCD, Elasticsearch, CloudAnt, and few others. So these, Database DBAS database options allow the clients to focus on their database and application development instead of spending time on hardware, software, version upgrades, trying too hard to make the DB available 24 by 7 and supporting HA requirements. What are the benefits? There are a lot of uh, uh, benefits uh, when it comes to cost saving which is like, you know, laying down an infrastructure up front for a database management is, you know, very expensive scaling and as it needed, you know, is also, you know, costly because you have to prepare your environment up front, actually, uh, whatever the size you needed your uh, to support your peak hour requirements, even though you don't use that one actually non peak periods. So it's like a it 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 also like unpredictable things are also can happen in an on-prem environments. So I think DBAS helps here in in an organization can pay only the predictable period of you know charges based on the resources you can consume. There is no need to purchase additional capacity upfront. That's a you know biggest cost saving and also also scalability up and down. So when there, when if you don't have actually peak work workloads running, or else you know non-peak hours, you can also reduce the capacity by reducing your CPU and memory, and uh, also uh, CPU and memory also increase actually when you need it actually. So you can do in you know, an automated way actually by setting up you know your policies. You can do that. And simpler and less costly management as well. So since you don't actually do a lot of database administration here, although you can choose to manage certain aspects yourself uh, if you wish, but 
DB, DBAS lightens the administrative burden on your existing IT staff, frees them to work on you know, applications and innovation. So rapid development and faster time to market. Also, the other things uh, can help actually for uh, in terms of actually how you will work with the database. So usually in enterprises, it may take like days or weeks or even months it will take in order to get provision a new database because you have to provision a hardware and you have to go through all kinds of you know approval process. But with DBAS and you know developer themselves can simply spin up you know configure the database in minutes right exactly in minutes so data and application security right will be taken care of by you know ibm very seriously and uh, and uh, it's like in you know, a data in a transit and data and at a rest is fully encrypted and it also ensures the integrated security and access management controls in place and reducing risk uh, like a uh, dbas offering supports like as i mentioned highly available clusters it will maintain here and it includes you know appropriate service level service level you know also it guarantees uptime and uh, if something unlikely event happens right uh, if it doesn't meet the specific sls customer can compensate it as well and when it comes to software quality, the databases we use here uh, is like, you know, really uh, pre-selected for a quality. And you won't have to worry about actually going through hundreds of different databases, figuring out actually, you know, what is the best quality software available for you to use. And, uh, oh, sorry about, okay. Then what is actually, what is the difference between, you know, DBAS and HyperProtect? DBAS here. So HyperProtect DBAS is, you know, it's a it's a bit advanced when it comes to you know security standpoint and also regulatory and compliance standpoint and uh, and reducing you know risk of you know compromised data. How it will do security controls is like you know you have a multiple options in IBM Cloud, which is a key product, and as well. Uh, hyper protect crypto service as well there are two versions of services available in 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 ibm cloud one is actually fips 140 to 140-2 level 3 which is a key protect and uh, the another one is um, uh, hyper protect crypto services is like you know fips 140- to level four security. No other cloud provider actually providing this level of you know, security at this time. But the what it means is actually, you can either bring your own key or actually keep your own key inside actually this key protect services. Mm -hmm. And you can use those key protect services to encrypt your data, mm -hmm. encrypt your data. So it's which is like, you know, providing, you know, tamper proof, mm -hmm. you know, data and also, on the security standpoint, actually, HyperProtect DBAS supports, you know, workload isolation, tamper-proof protection of, you know, data by ena enabling secure enclaves while processing this data. So basically, what it means is like, you know, uh, majority of the times, right, you can hear actually uh, in flight or in transit or a rest, you know, the data is encrypted. But what about in use, which is like, you know, talking about while it's in process, while it's in memory, you know. So uh, there are actually instances, somebody, you know, who might have access to the databases, they can also run a, you know, memory dumps. So memory dump can show something, right? But that is not possible, actually, with, you know, uh, this uh, secure enclave, you know, processing. Um, behind the scenes, you know, HyperProtect database, DBAS uses, you know, Linux One technology, and uh, which provides a confidential computing, right, for a lot of, you know, financial data, um, financial validated services, even HIPAA, or, you know, many other regulatory standards also it can support HIPAA uh, talking about. And uh, it 
that's what i'm saying like you know it can satisfy your regulatory and compliance control requirements and even audit controls because who does actually what and all i think you know it can provide you you know a good you know details about this so what it hyper product database provides a standardized apis to provision and manage and maintain and monitor the database and easy for you to use get started with the needed you know specialized without needing any specialized skills and data any database administration skills or even database skills i can say so let me okay what are the hyper protect databases available here so there are two versions of uh, databases two kinds of databases are available one is postgresql uh, which is you know a relational database management system and the hyper protect db as per mongodb so which is like a no sql database system so these are the two database uh, two databases are available under hyper protect you know umbrella and um, our demo is actually part of going through the um, db as per mongo db so we will talk about uh, we will i will take you all into the demo here and but before going to demo i would like to highlight actually the steps you know what i would like to follow here that way you know you all have like you know same understanding so i will use you know ibm cloud ui there are other ways actually to provision the database uh, but i would like to utilize you know ibm cloud ui and i will utilize you know uh, the ibm catalog to find you know hyper product database and i will provision and once the it is provisioned, actually, I will go through uh, resources list in IBM Cloud UI, and we'll open up uh, the created database, and we will find out actually how to work with, you know, how to connect with the database, what are the clients available, and how to, you know, uh, create a new database, and how to work with a collection, and maybe adding some data and retrieving data, right, through whatever the UI tools are available for us, and we'll follow these steps. And give me one second. I will switch to my end the slideshow.
let me take to my IBM cloud. So I just signed in to my IBM cloud account. So I already created one Mongo uh, hyper product MongoDB database here. You see actually the categories of you know resources you can see here. And I created one database here. So MongoDB test so that you know I can utilize you know time effectively here for it so that I can demo this database instead of waiting to provision the new database. But anyway, we will see actually how that goes as well. So when it comes when you came to the data to the UI, let's use this catalog as an option and search for hyper protect. Or you can actually use you know this databases menu. So there are 40 plus databases exist here. And uh, there are two different you know types of MongoDB. There is you know DBAS as a MongoDB version exists as well hyperprotect MongoDB, right? We were only talking about at this time hyperprotect DBAS for MongoDB. So this demo. So when you click actually select the database there, it brings you into this page where you are just choosing whatever the region you are you like to keep your database you are selecting the region and then there are two different you know pricing models here but i don't see i don't say that one this is a two different models i can say there is only one pricing model exist at this time so a mongodb flexible but this is just a free version if you would like if we wanted to try you can try this free version uh and for uh, temporarily you know you can try for 30 days but this is the version we are talking about here so mongodb by default it creates you know three node cluster here when you choose this option it default it creates a three node cluster cluster to make it highly available database for your use so just provide some names i do follow something some standard here So that I can, I don't want it to repeat my names. So you can give like these tags for you to, you know, control later, you know, some access and all like, you know, see access management tags I can give so that, you know, you can apply, you know, uh, policies and rules, but I'm not going to fulfill those needs because those are not, you know, required. So cluster name is also important here because you will utilize this cluster name in the later in the session so just give like a meaningful name so that you'll also remember and there is a database admin user and password uh, this is very important. You have to remember this username and you know password so that you you will use this username password to connect to the database and manage you know access or create a new users in the database. So let me type here a few things. Um, I do go for you know little bit simple usernames and passwords here for my purposes, but in production world. I don't recommend actually using name called you know admin as a username, but I'm just using here for for my purposes. Okay, so the password is also you needed to type in like a 15 character long password. So make sure you remember as well that one. Okay, so I entered in a, in a right password in both the places. Okay, so the database version, I think, you know, as I said, actually, IBM will take care of version upgrades and the current version available here is MongoDB Enterprise 4.4. And uh, I, I don't want it to change all these options at this time because I can go up to 125 GB RAM, but it's we are talking about a three node cluster here. 
right? And um, I think the the size of the cluster is so big. Actually, if you talk if you are talking about 128 GB, and let's talk about here, right? I'm going for only the minimum configuration, and here also the database disk allocation. Also, I don't need actually really big disk at this time because since it is a demo, but you will appropriately provision for your needs, for your purposes. So I'm going for one CPU, virtual CPU. I don't need actually more than that. But anyway, when even one is one CPU, it is like a three virtual CPUs total. The another important thing I was talking about automatic disk encryption. It will take care of automatically the disk encryption here. Yeah, I log in. Let me change it to Washington DC. So I have some key product instances I created and root keys were there, but unfortunately it is not showing. But what you can see here is there is a Yeah, see, uh, maybe my different regions have this actually keys. Uh, so you can use that key to encrypt using your own key. If you don't use your own key by default, actually, it does that encryption. Uh, whatever IBM supplies encryption is, it uses, it encrypts the data here. And I'm not actually keeping only the private network. I'll keep a public network because I would like to connect actually from my desktop. But in a real production world, I think you will be setting up into private and however you want to connect, you can connect. But uh, this is the one actually you will be selecting a root key here. You know, if you have a key product or a um, crypto services, those two options will be displayed here by after selecting this one, you will be choosing, you know, a root key here. That's an uh, option. So. So this is like, you know, a very simple to use i think you know you wouldn't take like a more than you know two three minutes to fill in but i'm since i'm here i'm going a little slow and i'll explain and when you click create and a while to create so additional created and read so it brings back to resources list you can see this database category yeah it's i think loading It expanded actually all of my. OK, so I have two databases, you know, the test one was there from the beginning and I was creating a test two. So let me go to, you know, the test one at least to demo the time actually provisioned. It. So when I go. Okay, it's taking a little while. Okay, it brings up to this kind of console in a UI, but you can also manage this database using IBM Cloud CLI or actually, you know, IBM Cloud APIs as well. So there are actually things, you know, it provides, you know, getting started, you know, figuring out, you know, what are the MongoDB tools you will use to connect and all. It provides you how to set up, you know, CLI which I'm talking about IBM Cloud CLI, where you can manage this database and how do you can secure data. So you can see, but let's come to here, the overview. And this is the database I created actually with this with 5 GB. And when you look at here, it provides you how to connect it, providing me the details, you know, the, the fully qualified domain name as well as the port number. Usually MongoDB default port is 27017. Uh, but in IBM, it puts actually the appropriate ports, you know, is needed. And you will be utilizing these ports, not like, you know, whatever the default was been, uh, you are familiar with, with MongoDB. So database user, right now I have only one database user here. And I created another database as well. That's what you are seeing here, shell user, just to, for me to perform some operations through Mongo shell. And I'll talk about that as well. 
this is the authentication key you needed this key because it requires you know secure connection to the database so this pem file is important so you have to download and keep that pem file with you and this is a cluster name you also needed to remember the cluster name so there are steps here and uh, ibm made it very simple here you come and look at this one how to connect there are provided a two options the compass is a ui and this is a shell is a mongo shell so you can you can download here the mongo shell and also you can download the compass i already downloaded you know in my local for this demo and you it providing let's say download and install mongo and download the certificate keep it in an appropriate place and connect as in a user admin to run the following command so the reason is user admin see username is an admin so whatever the username you chose that is the one you are going to utilize here to connect and then actually uh, the certification uh, the certificate file right whatever you downloaded you are supplying the certificate file the path of that as well and then you will perform and this is in our campus this is an another tool which is like a ui and you will be utilizing ui to connect to the database but here there are few other setups you needed to do and i will go and demo that one as well to you let before going to a demo let me you know show you actually a few things here how easily you can increase your capacity right i can go and increase you know my if i if i'm thinking my database requires so much you know memory in, intensive i can increase the memory i needed and also the virtual cpus i needed right so whether it is need, whether i needed 16 virtual cpus i can change and simply you know i can enable it apply changes it applies so the way it applies the changes also depends upon node to node right so we have a three node cluster it goes and applies from node by node so you don't see actually any kind of a downtime when this is happening okay that's important thing you all needed to remember so whatever the default setting i don't want it to change at this time but you know even you change that's what i was telling it won't impact actually anything while you know you're using the database you know online you can do all this stuff so when it comes to databases what are the databases are here i have an admin config local i created this tech tuesday for us to demo let me and then users i did i did add it actually the user through my command line i will show you how to add the user as well so for you all can see that one so how many nodes i have so i have multiple nodes and there are log files here you can see the log file what i mean to what i'm trying to say here is even you see a log file there is no an application data will be in this log files it is simply actually mongodb level you know logs and audit logs will be captured here so that you know one can come and actually see the audit logs so the observability there are few other things i would like to talk about how do you monitor your database you can integrate with actually ibm cloud you know monitoring tools and you know log analysis as well log analytics tools you can use and you can enable however you, you however you want like you know click on add monitoring it will let you actually select you know what is your monitoring pricing and tooling all this stuff here um i don't want you to go there okay so let me come back here looks like you know okay this is the database i'm working so far but let me open that also in a separate window and this is the database we created see it's already up and running in just next you know in less than five minutes it created right i'm opening up in a two different tabs these two the first one is the one i created earlier prior to this demo to just to show you these things and there are backup and restore so automatically every uh, few every eight hours it does the backup but if you wanted to do like you know more frequent actually often one hour as well you can do through the cloud object storage i already configured here through the cloud object storage let's see here this is my local right and the, I, if i wanted to restore to this backup i can restore it right 
but uh, at the same time not only local i also included actually here in a cloud object storage so i will demo this one as well uh, just give me one second because i would like to demo first you know this stuff so see i have actually this is the primary node what it is showing this is my secondary node this is the, you know the third node so you can see the log file separately for each node what is happening you know and at each level right so let me come back to you know overview so how to connect so i needed to have these tools to be ready for me to connect so let me go through the shell first and then you know i'll come back there okay so the rec the recommendation is actually you will copy this one but you know my shell name is not mongo mongo sh right i know there are some quotes here quotes won't work uh, you have to remove these quotes as well uh, maybe the older mongo maybe is allowing but you know at my shell it's not allowing to do that so there is a command here you see that one mongo sh and this is the whole connection string i picked up from here i picked up from here can okay, see this one the port number 30434 also here so my primary server's port number and you know the secondary server and third server as well third node as well and what is my replica set what is the cluster name as i remember as i told you we needed to remember this cluster name so this is the cluster name you needed to supply here as a replication set and then you have to mention i think you know it should it should go through the tls and also supply the username so basically i can give like you know whatever the usernames i created like an admin but let's use actually the shell user one here for a minute okay and which i created i will show you how to create you know username as well so it will prompt you the password just type the pass password Okay, it's connected. So it reached. It came to you know Tech Tuesday, but let's talk about here. You know, show collections. What are the collections available? I created one collection here as a client. So this is how actually you will connect to the MongoDB uh, credential provided here, and this is that simple actually to connect to. Let's go back to now for a minute, right? Before I come back here, you know, show you how to create a user and let me take it back take it to you compass as a ui tool so this is a mongo compass you can download from this location and you needed to follow these steps here to do that one and um, let me open okay yeah see that's what i told you right this is a default port but you know in IBM, we don't use a default port. It uses the other port number, whatever is listed. So make sure you know you're changing all the stuff. And uh, you have to supply your connection string here. So the easiest way for you to grab the connection string is here, right? You can grab this one. But this is not simple enough, actually. You needed to supply few other things as well. Let me come back here. See, there is an advanced setting option you needed to supply tls ssl here is the file pem file you will actually you know connect to so this is my tech use do you know uh, file and uh, uh, you can use to connect here and the other thing is like you know authentication you needed to supply your username and password and authentication database which is admin by default or you can supply like a tech tuesday the one i created for the other user so this is that simple but let me grab actually my things from here i have already gathered few things uh, Uh, let me close and i'll open one more time here so which i already connected earlier
so i have some uh, unescaped characters that's what it is you know prompting me here uh, due to some reason i have some kind of you know passwords not created properly so let me do one thing i have here you know the connected one let me run through this okay see here it's showing my databases which is tech tuesday admin config and local these are actually system databases we don't touch any of them but i created a database here so see that is what it is what this is what it is showing let's talk about maybe creating one more database here let's say person however i want actually maybe let me put you know tech one person as a collection right? just create a database you know it's that simple creating a database so uh, when you come here actually i already created a collection called like this client but let me show you you know you can also create a collection here simply you know come here and person collection one so collection is basically a table here you can you know interpret that way if you are coming from actually rdbms world so the collection is just like a table so let me show you i have this person and this is a client let's look at this one so this is the data i added actually alex rider you know all this stuff so i just simply added this data um before actually this meet this one so see the you can do like a lot of aggregations you know however you want like you know indexes you can create validation but the the important point here is let's say i have a first name last name and there is an address right address is an object again here and uh, email and company right but tomorrow if i would like to add actually maybe company's address i can add actually company's address not only the client you know individual's address here i can add from that moment onwards uh, this is actually dynamic schema it allows so that you you can modify at any time when it come to relational databases you needed to work on adding a column sometimes in some enterprises you know it's very difficult as well actually adding a column or increasing the size of the column and all but in mongodb it's not at all an issue this is like you know json style structure of the data the way it stores is it called a json document a bson document that's how mongodb refers here you can create let's say i have a person right and it is saying you know import data or add data when i click insert a document so this is what it is providing me i have like you know some prepared you know things you know db dot get collection dot person right insert so i'm just like simply you know keeping this data there okay it looks like it it only allow one by one let me one more time okay so simple actually i'm just typing here just typing my name Yeah, simply I inserted actually one. It is saying some duplicate key, but it's showing one document here. Let me check on that. Okay, so it's inserted, but unfortunately, it did not insert it in a right way. Um, Let me add one more thing here.
seeing a comma as well. Yeah, but anyway, this is this is how I think you know inserting, and it's showing up you know the insert after inserting the data, and I have uh, here actually inserted you know a few stuff here. You can see them in a columnar you know view as well in this Mongo Compass, and uh, let me come back to actually the UI for a minute, and also let me show it show it to you right how to create you know username. I just you know captured here just to speed up the things. And simply create db user command is the one you are utilizing and supplying your usernames, password, whatever you want, actually. Okay, and I have only one earlier and I'm creating the second one. And even you think like you can connect. Okay. I think let me execute here. I have two windows. Um, I should be log. I'm logging with you know admin user. Otherwise, it won't let me create you know a user. So it created now the second user. And let me come back and show you the second user and a UI. We saw here too, right? Let me refresh this one. Yeah, it's showing up in you know, a third user as well. So it's a that sim it's very simple actually to create a database and work with here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, let's talk about you know the backup and restore. Since since you know my other piece, my other database, when you look at the database, I already connected to the cloud object store here, right? Similarly, you needed to connect you know to cloud object store. You have to set up. So you have to supply like you know cloud object store you know details whatever it is, right? The full CRN of you know your cloud object store, and then follow the steps, and you provide you know a service credentials. Uh, then it goes and actually backs up into you know into cloud object store as well. See here the new database I created. I'm not showing up any backups because it it like you know it does like every eight hours. The database which I created earlier, it's already showing up. You know all these you know backups. If you wanted to restore, you can click on restore or else one other thing. Depends upon how user credentials been provided access to, you know, the IAM rules, policies, you know, given access, you will be seeing this one. But, you know, uh, it's not advisable actually enabling through, you know, the UI, all this, you know, administration stuff. Uh, it's better to, you know, provide access to you know cli maybe you know specifically for a particular iam user and all so that helps actually but you know you can simply you can re click on restore and it restores to you know whatever the day you want to restore that's simple so two other things also i covered observability so you can enable actually you know observability uh, you know logging and all but you know in both the instances right ibm won't see actually any of our customer data here only this logging enabled on a mongodb operational you know uh, the system level information will be logged but if you wanted to log from you inside your mongodb to you know uh, the ibm log analysis you can do that as well okay so i am majority of the things you know i covered and uh, i'm just wanted to make sure you know uh, with you one more time i covered actually we talked about what are what is actually uh, dbas and how many databases are in ibm cloud and um, what is the cluster actually you can create in in a mongodb hyperprotect database and we talked about observability, how to configure and how to configure backup at restore to you know IBM Cloud Object Store as well. And you can reduce the size of the, uh, you can reduce uh, the uh, the interval uh, from instead of eight hours to you know one hour or even less than that. Actually, you can enable you know taking a backups by yourself as well. Um, and then uh, it's very easy. As I mentioned, actually, how to connect 
and maybe the once you, when you are following in this demo dabin you know easily uh, connected to this databases as well and the connection details will be provided here you, if you can follow these simple steps you can able to connect and the majority of the times the mongodb uses like you know a uh, great it, it's in the it, it's a kind of a standard now a lot of places the nosql databases so it's fast and supports a lot of microservices use cases and all and i uh, thought of preparing a demo but you know we'll we'll try actually in future sessions you know some demo working and connecting to them you know microservices connecting to the database to show you uh with that said right thanks once again for joining the session and i hope you all enjoyed uh, a short learning on how easy to provision and use the hyperprotect database hyperprotect dbas for mongodb uh let's wait for actually interesting cohort session and i'm giving back the control to daniel uh, to run the cohort and if you have any questions definitely you know i'll come back here and answer your questions